Hey everybody, it's Neil from Heaviosity, and it's great to be back with you guys. You know, it's been a while since we've done an episode of Two Hour Cues, so today that's what we're gonna do. And the track that I wrote is in the style of a new film called Tenet. And the reason I like it is it's a pretty diverse score. Uh, there's a lot of like analog synth elements, there are some traditional elements, and then there's this kind of murkiness going on. Uh, a lot of different tracks, a lot of cool sounds, and again, my idea was just to take kind of the flavors of that sound and do my own thing with it, and then write a track and do our thing into our cues when we just get into it. Another thing to note is this track is not some big melody track with lots of orchestration. It's really about the sounds that I chose. And I tried to spend time, probably more time than I would usually spend, to find cool sounds from different spots and places in some of our virtual instruments to create the sound. So enough talking, let's get into it. I'm going to stop it right there and we're going to take a look at what's going on. So I have two instances of contact running our instruments in it. And the first one has a piano and a number of other elements. Let's take a look at those if we pop this open. So we have a Sen, which is a modern grand piano. I'm actually using synth from a virtual instrument and I'm using a number of different synths in my room, uh, which I'll talk about. Uh, we've got some tonal sweeps loaded in. We'll see if we use those. We've got a woodwind designer from Vento um, as a little texture. And then Aeon hits, which are the big Brahms. And I did a little trick on the end that I'll show you. And then we've got violin section one, violas, cello. And then for the real lows, I have a low ensemble loaded in. And those are from Novo. And then all the percussion is from, wait for it, Damage 2, yeah baby. As we recently released Damage 2, we're super psyched about it, but I digress, back to the track. All the percussion that you'll hear is coming from that, whether it's big hits or loops, so let's take a look and see what we have. So what's the first thing that occurs here? We have an Aeon hit, right? And that's the big Brom. Let's solo that. So that's a simple hit, right? So you'll notice I trigger the hit and then down here, if you can see, it says pitch bend, right? So at the very end of it, again, this has like a long release so the sample is still playing. I bend the pitch up a tiny bit. It just makes it a little like ew, unnerving. What else is going on in the intro? Let's take a look. That's the biggest thing. You're hearing the piano playing a pretty simple progression. again. All right. And then the wood designer. That's kind of a neat sound. Let's check out what that is. And I did the same kind of technique. It's from Vento, which is our woodwinds library. 
and it's using the designer. So there's three different parts that essentially make the whole. So if we look at the source page, we've got three different parts. On the low end, the note that I'm triggering for this, it's not even being used. But if you look at the center, it's like a triple P flutter, which is kind of neat. From the flutes. All right, cool. Enough of that. Let's hop back to where we were. So you can hear the flute, it's subtle, starts to dive in pitch, and then we end up with some drums coming in to the picture. We start here. Lots of boomy good stuff. So we're using Armageddon 2, which is from Damage 2, and let's take a listen. While that echoes up, we'll take a coffee break. And these hits are kind of wet, very wet. So that soup kind of works with the atmospheric parts that are going on. Uh, if we look at the next part, which is called Ambient Beasts, and that's damage too as well. Big echoey hit. And some really kind of low... I think that's like Super Bowl on a giant drum head. I might be wrong. I might be right. All right, so that's happening as well. Um, and the loops, let's see what's going on here. So I did something interesting with loops. To bring them in in a way that was subtle and have them build, I added a controller to the filter. So let's just take a look at that. And you'll see it here, the filter's on and I just, right-clicked and attached a controller and use my little knob here. And it's opening. You can see the curve down here. Almost all the way open. So why do that? Let's see how it sits in the mix and maybe that will give us our answer. So you can see how it works with the big booms and there's some hits and atmospheric stuff going on. And then the loop kind of comes in in a, in a subtle way, stealthy loop, and you start to get a sense of time. So also I didn't mention, this is got like a one, two, three, one, two, three, almost like a six eight feel it's not straight one two three four one two three four one two three it's just for a, a different vibe okay so let's pick it up where we start to get a little more developed here big boomer Now we can talk about the analog synth stuff. So I have the luxury of a Moog Sub 37, Sub 37 over there, and I don't often use it enough. So let's just see what's going on. All 
All right, so we've got some reverb here. I have um, a hardware unit called a Bricasti, but you could use any plug-in reverb. So if we kill that, dries right up, which is neat. Uh, so we've got Punish on this thing, making it more aggressive. There she is, without it. It's a little darker sounding. And after that, I've got a plug-in called Decapitator, which is adding a little more distortion. And changing the tone of the sound. All right, so if we go back to see how that sits in the mix, we want to put this reverb back on. So that's going on with some rhythm. Let's just check that out and some of the hits. And it looks like we've got another part here. Let's see what's going on with that. So you get a sense the energy is building, you know, this do did do 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 which is up here with this sub-37 synth. And then we have another part which adds to the flavor of all of this, and that is... Oh, wow. And again, with this being like a 6-8 feel... What I did was I wrote a phrase here that's actually four notes long, but it's still in the triplet. Which seems like a polyrhythm, it's not a like in-depth crazy polyrhythm, but it sort of is, if you put the click in, you feel it differently. If I shut it off, you get sucked into this feeling like it's almost like, so just the way that you can phrase something can say a lot about like the energy that you want to get out of that part. And in this case, that's what's going on um, with this synth. And so this is an analog synth, but it's in our NPO3, which is the uh, the Novo Pack 3, which is all like vintage synths and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. So let's listen to the Sub 37, which is an outboard. So it's a little loose rhythmically, which is good. Why be so stiff? So if we play it with the drums. So that's building. And then there's another part that works with this rhythmically. It starts to get busier by doing more and more parts, but I wanted to find something that had like an interesting tone to it. So I went to this cello, which is an intimate textures and check out this part. So it follows a progression. Now, what happens with that and this NPO vintage synth playing the jaka da 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 So you get a sense of how they're overlapping in a way that feels interesting. And then if we add in the sub-37 synth, which is do de do 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 de do do that grounds it a little bit more. So let's see what all three sound like. All right, so with the rhythm in on the bottom, basically everything.
again the Aeon hit bent up and then it goes into the next section. The last thing is just for a little flavor in there I used a tonal sweep from Gravity just to add this kind of staticky weirdness uh, which we just heard. So let's move on our little journey here and checking this piece out. Sorry, I had to stop there. This again, I'm using the loops um, and I'm using this CC controller, the filter, to really, as you heard, make them kind of really muted sounding and then come out of the Merc and be present. And, it's, and, and it helps it build to the next section. So if we start where that begins, you're gonna see this is the mod wheel with the filter closed. Not totally, but it's down here. Opening, opening. And then it goes into the next section. So there's the filter uh, on that damage loop preset. All right, I'm going to stop with the teasing and go into the next section. Um, here you're going to notice that I've got two other parts, and these are also synth. So the sub 37, it's white here because I muted it. I decided not to use that. Um, as I added more parts, it would just seem like it was overkill. So down here, here's something new that we haven't heard yet. And this is my mod synth setup. I've got a ton of synthesizer modules over here, which you can't see, but maybe I can add a shot in. So I created the sound. I just wanted to go into the, the shed, so to speak, and um, get really creative with it. And I actually had Ari help me with that because he is like a huge brainiac with the mod synth stuff. And uh, I think it came out kind of cool. Um, and there's yet another synth. Uh, it's a boom star. That's the name of it. And it's a tabletop synth. So let's just listen to this section and then I'll, I'll solo those parts and you can hear them. <laughs> All right, so the mod synth, we made it audio because you never know what that thing is gonna sound like two days later after you program it. So. It's pretty chunky. Um, let's see, we've got some Brocastia reverb on it again. We have a plugin called the Cooper Time Cube, uh, which is a delay and it's kind of an old school sound. So if we shut those off. Very dry. And then I just have a limiter really just to make it louder and squish it a little bit. And after that, this uh, flanger. It's already kind of phasing with the way we set the sound up um, with the modular synth stuff. So if we put these effects back on, up and up is cool. And if we listen to what the Boom Star is doing, it's a completely different vibe. And that one is really wet, so. That's what it sounds like with nothing on it. So I'm, I'm using a lot of effects processing. Um, again, I have this decapitator, which is distortion, the flanger again, um, an EQ, and a thing called Pan Man, which kind of spreads it left to right really quickly, because there's a lot going on, and it's a little trick to kind of make a little more space. So if we listen to just the Pan Man, on headphones at least, I can hear it moving back and forth. All right. Flanger. And 
this uh, decapitator isn't really making it distorted, it's just f making it fuller sounding. So that with the Bracasti reverb and the Cooper time cube, you can hear that delay. So before we get into that, I need another little coffee break. All right, so with those effects back in, let's take a listen to the whole thing. Now with the mod synth. And then let's put the piano in because it gives a sense of like where the chordal progression is going. see what we got here. That's wrong. Pretty simple. So what else makes this tick here? Um, we've got synths and drums, and then we're gonna look at what happens after that to start to build it more. So again, there's a loop, we have some Armageddon action, and some more loop. So the thing that I, I noticed, as soon as I put the drums in, the whole feel of it kind of changed because you kind of get sucked into this uh, modular synth patterns being in like a 6-8 vibe. Again, if we take the drums out. It almost feels like you're just playing a straight you know, 4-4 four, four vibe. And then the drums kind of spell out, actually, no, wait, I'm in 6-8. So let's take a look at the drums. Inquiring minds want to know. A loop. And that continues on. And that's a damage two loop. Take a look. All right, so what's the loop? Team. SWAT team. SWAT team knocking. Just a high loop. All right, and then underneath that, we probably have some more substantial stuff going on. Armageddon 2 coming at you. Big whoosh. And that is, um, it's got a lot of energy and power in it, and they are really wet, but like this. Let's take a look at that. So that's an ensemble bass drum. And I'm using the uh, performance designer here. And you see it's on swell. But it feels like a big whoosh you know, and that kind of propels you into this energy building with the drums and the loop and all that stuff, so. Again. And then this one's kind of cool too. It's the performance designer here. Low plastic tubs. And again, you can see crescendo. 
it's just very handy to work quickly and get authentic sounding drums. All right, so let's check out the other part, which looks like it's additional loops. Let's just go right to 28. So at this point, the drums are really pretty honking, pretty heavy, right? So... Let's listen to everything together there. It gets pretty big. So I wanted to introduce some more traditional elements to kind of chug away at this progression. So let's check it out at bar 32. Kind of neoclassical sounding. So let's just break that down. So we have violas playing. And they're playing against the cellos. Let's see what's going on with the cellos. And this is a cello section, which is different than the intro where I was using the Intimate Textures cello, which had a completely different sound for a reason. Um, so these two parts together, the violas and cellos, There's a little bit of a kind of a trading off thing going on here. So I have some notes omitted in the cellos just to give this kind of back and forth playfulness between the two sections. And then again, these strings are all in Novo, our um, large string ensemble uh, virtual instrument. So this is the real low stuff, and this is called low ensemble. And you can see that says spiccato. So those are really beefy and chunky playing along. So all three of these together you start to get. And then if we throw in Ascend, the piano part. It's busy and there's a lot going on. So if we then throw in our mod synth. boom star synth if you notice this that was the original midi that i played and then i made it audio because i wanted to add some plugins to it and it's a one so it's the kind of synth that you adjust you get a cool sound and then if you move any knobs and buttons and all that stuff you lose it so i was like i like the sound i'm going to record it it's audio and it's not going to go anywhere so let's listen to these together <laughs> And this adds a lot to kind of the top end. It opens it up without it. With it. Again, you have that phrasing. I 
Again, it's phrased with four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Against the strings that are kind of chugging along in this triplet vibe. And then it seems to make more sense rhythmically where things are falling. So, again, if we just put everything in, drums and all... bring in a violin to add to the top. So let's see what that's doing. Just kind of reinforcing what the violas are already doing. So if you listen to those together, And there's some part separation, you know, to just have this kind of voice ba -da -da -ba -da -ba -da going on. So I wrote the whole part with all the notes, and then when I dragged it down from the violins to the violas, I started pulling notes out to get a more, um, I don't know, lively performance out of it. So if we look at the MIDI from those... So the white, well, they're like light pink notes are, I believe, from, yeah, the violin. So if we listen to the violins, and then we listen to them together. So I was wrong. It's the viola. Yep. Wow. Okay. And then things change again. And a lot of this is playing with rhythm. Um, so let's, let's look at this last chunk of section three. The violins kind of come out of their previous zone where they're supporting violas, which we heard, and then they jump up an octave. And what are they doing and, and, and why is that happening? So let's take a look. What's the synth doing? There's your answer. Uh, the piece was getting bigger and bigger and bigger, almost too big, and I wanted it to just kind of stand out and get a little more separation. And throwing the violins up an octave and ghosting what the synth was doing seemed to achieve that, I think. So there we have violins, we have our mod synth, we've got our boom star synth, which is the plinkier sound, all playing this and then there's this sort of neoclassical movement with the violas, cellos, and a low ensemble under it. It's a lot, it's thick. So let's throw in the kitchen sink or everything. And that's how it ends. So I ended with the same um, Aeon hit that I started with, but instead of bending it up to have that kind of question mark or almost like uh, something is a little off, I wanted to feel I wanted it to feel final. Um, but before we completely delve into the end, why don't we check out this whole section and hear how it's all working and building? <laughs>
right, so the last thing I'm going to mention is with the drums as they're building, you started to hear these parts, uh, which is this Armageddon thing. So let's let's check that out. It just is accenting what's happening and really nailing the rhythm down. So coming up. So in the piece, let's just notice that again. Right here. She's out. So that is the piece in its entirety. Why don't we listen down to the whole thing and see how it builds and how the parts are all working together since we have not heard the whole thing. so this is the piece and i hope you guys enjoyed it and got something out of this maybe a better understanding of this kind of genre and how to layer and use rhythm um, to convey a certain kind of energy um, we kind of talked about that with the synth parts and it being in a six eight time signature feel and uh, how the drums interplay with that and the synths doing two different kind of parts, one laying down the straight vibe and the other one doing the do 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 one two three four one two three four and how that works rhythmically. So again, I really appreciate you guys checking this out and tuning in for yet another episode of Two Hour Cues. So I just want to say thanks so much for watching and make sure to like and subscribe and you'll get all the information when new videos come out from Heaviosity. So take care. Thanks.